Hello, welcome back to part 2. Before we begin, if you haven't watched part 1 yet, pause this video and go watch part 1. There is tons of info there. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Also, please leave your thoughts on the comment section down below. Let's get started. Okay, let's start creating our materials. Let's go with something simple first. We'll do our wall material. Let's open up our material editor and we'll create our corona material. Let's set the diffuse color to white. So I'll set the value to about 190, which works really good for white so that it's not too bright that the final render will be clipped. Um, and if the wall looks a little darker, then we can always bring it back in post. Now I want to increase the reflection to one. Okay, for the glossiness, I'm going to use a map. Let me drag and drop that. Here is the map. And I'll just put that in the reflection glossiness slot. We should soften our reflection. Next thing, I want to give our wall a little bit of bump. So I'm going to use a normal map. This is what it looks like. So it's just got some um, little detail on our wall, giving it some variation. Okay. Now, before I plug that directly into the bump map, I'm going down to Corona map section and drag and drop a Corona normal. And I'll just plug that into the normal map. Now, before I plug that back, just one more thing, just tick the add gamma to input. Uh, if you don't take that, it will give you some kind of artifacts, as you can see here. You can see that. So if you just turn that on, it should fix that. Let me apply that to my wall. If I want to see this map on the viewport, I can just hit this button, which will show that map in the viewport. Now let's go ahead and do a quick test render. But before I do the render, I want to zoom, zoom in on this area um, so that I can see the map in detail. So rather than adjusting, changing the camera or going to a different viewport, I will just go click this plus sign here and enter the 2D zoom pan mode. And I can just zoom in there and my um, render viewport will just render that area. Let's go to the scene and start interactive. All right. Now it's a little hard to see at the moment because everything else in our scene is gray. Um, but once we start adding more materials, it should be uh, more visible. But you can already see all our bumps working. Um, I just think the bump map is a little too strong, so I'm just going to reduce that. Let me go to my material editor, and on the Corona Normal, I can adjust the strength multiplier and set it to 0 0.5. I think that will look great. Let me stop the render and I'm going to exit the zoom mode, exit zoom mode. And now let's go ahead and create our floor material. For that, again, we'll go back to our material editor. I'm going to drag in another Corona material map material. I'm just going to rename this flooring and the top one, I'll just rename that as a wall. It's always good to organize your scene a little bit. Now for the flooring material, I have this map here, which is uh, a wood map. And I'll just plug that into the diffuse slot. Now let's go ahead and view that in the viewport. Oh, I forgot to apply it. Let's select our flooring object and assign material to selection. Now you can see the map in the viewport. Okay, uh, let's get back to the 2D, 2D zoom pan mode and zoom in on the floor here. We'll probably zoom around maybe this area so we can see some reflection there as well. Let's enter the interactive mode. Got a lot of sun in there, maybe a different area. something around there. Okay. Now I'm going to add in some reflection here. Increase the amount by one. 
that will be too reflective obviously our woods are never that reflective so i'm going to use a glossiness map uh, but instead of using a different map i'm going to generate that with the same map that we have okay i will just go down and add in a corona color correct plug this map into the co color correct and i will desaturate this and I'll plug that into the reflection glossiness. I think this map is still uh, too bright for our glossiness, so I'm just going to darken this a little bit. You can just reduce the gamma. Something like that. You can already see some reflection there which is nice now let's go ahead and add in a bump map i'm again going to create another map with the diffuse map for the bump slot i'll drag another corona color correct plug that in there and i'm going to desaturate that again this time i'm going to increase the contrast maybe something around eight and i can just plug that into the bump map if you want to see it here, right click and update previous. Sometimes this does not update. It's a little bit hard to see there. But I can increase the bump amount from here. Let's go up to three. This might be too much, but we'll adjust that. Let's check here. I think it looks about right. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. We can always adjust that later if we need to tweak some more. Now that we're done with the flooring material, I will go ahead and create our curtain material. Okay, the curtain is gonna be a little bit different. So let's drag the Corona material. I'm going to drag a diffuse map. Now with curtains, they have a fall off property or a Fresnel property. So anything that's perpendicular to the viewer's eye is going to be lighter, while anything that's parallel to the viewer's eye is going to be darker. So in order to create that effect, I'll just drag our fall off map. Let's go to the general tab and drag our fall off map. Now I want to plug this map onto the map one slot. As you can see, uh, the center part, this one's the white, which is brighter, but I don't want it to be completely white. So what I'll do is drag another color correct map, plug this one into the color correct slot, and I will increase the exposure on this by 0 0.5. And I'll plug that into the map too. I can go with a little bit more exposure here. All right. Now let's go into the fall off and I want to make the fall off a little bit stronger. So I'll just click this here and right click and busy a corner and I can just drag this all the way here. Okay. Now I'll just apply this to the diffuse color. Let's assign this to our curtain and view this on the viewport. Okay, now we're going to plug the same map into our opacity slot. Okay, let's go ahead and do some test render. We do need to add one more property to our curtain, which is translucency. That's looking okay. We just need to tweak it a little more. I'm going to stop this. Let's go back here and I'm going to add in some reflection. And on the glossiness slot, I'm going to plug in the same map. Now 
Now for the translation, I'm just going to change this to 0 0.5. Now, if any of these values are too strong or the map is too bright or darker, you can always adjust it so that you can mix it with the default color. For an example, for the diffuse, if the diffuse is too bright, you can change this color to be darker color or black, and I can mix the value. Okay. If I change the diffuse value to 50, you will see that the map gets darker or the material gets darker. So I'll just set it to 100. I'm just trying to show it as an example here. Let's go ahead and do a quick render now. Okay, I think it's looking right. Uh, let the render clear a little bit so we know a little bit better going to increase the size of the VFB. All right, let's go ahead and do our plant material there, which should be pretty much uh, similar to how I create other materials. So we'll create a Corona material. I'm going to name it plant. I'm going to drag in my map. That's my diffuse map. Just plug that into the diffuse color. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get my plant there and I'm going to ungroup this so that I can just select the plant and I'll just go ahead and assign this. Let's view this on the viewport. Let's go to the perspective view so we can see it clear. Now this model is already UV, UV mapped, already unwrapped so the map will feel, fit perfectly. All right. We're just going to add in some reflection. Now that's too uh, sharp, so we're going to soften it with some glossiness value. Probably set it at about 0 0.6. Now, because this is a very thick leaf, the light is not going to be able to pass through it. But if you have some other plants that has thin leaves, you want to set a translucency value. I'll show you how to do it. So you can just go ahead, add a color correct map assign this map there and you want to make sure the map that you plug into the translucency color is brighter than your diffuse map okay so just change the gamma to be two and just plug that into the translucency color it should change your material slightly oh, I forgot to increase the translucency C amount so set that to 0 0.5 and as you can see now your leaf will be translucent but because this is a very thick uh, leaf it's not going to have the translucent property so I'm just going to clear that I'll just delete this I just wanted to show, show you how to do it now I'm just going to add a bump map here I already have a bump map so I'm just going to plug that into the bump slot I'll probably increase it a little bit, 1.5, and that will look good. Okay, I think I've covered up uh, all the basic materials that you can create. Now from here onwards, I will leave you guys to uh, create the um, rest of the materials, and I will see you guys in the next lesson where we'll look at setting up our render settings and doing the final render. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on the comment section below. See you guys next time. Cheers.